Hi, I'm Rebecca Perlman, and I'm from Jericho, New York, and Nassau Suffolk region. I'm here with Reverend Stephen Green, a pastor and chair for the Black Lives Matter movement. What does it mean to be here today at BBYO's national convention to speak to thousands of teens? This is an incredible opportunity to speak and to talk with uh, teens from all across the country and even throughout the world. These young leaders who are emerging uh, on a horizon will help uh, us lead forward. There's always been a collaboration between the African-American community and the Jewish community, all the way to uh, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, who marched with Dr. King and Cheney and Goodman and Schwanner, those young activists who came to uh, the 1960s Freedom Summer movement. Uh, there's always been a collaboration of a, of a constant joint struggle to work together. And so I'm grateful to come to this conference to talk to some of these incredible young leaders who are carrying the torch and keeping the journey going forward. As Joseph coming off a stage speaking to thousands of teens, what do you believe the energy in the room was like and with such a diverse group of teens from all over the world? Well, the en energy was incredible. The young people were uh, intuitive and attentive. Uh, to the, the speakers. I mean, they were absolutely warm and welcoming uh, to everyone. It, you feel as though that their passion can be felt uh, very, very much so in the room radiating. And so I'm grateful to have that burst of energy to take on my journey. And I'm so honored that each and every uh, young person that came, that sacrificed their weekend, that came and took the time out, uh, were, were intentional about what they wanted to do with their time this weekend. I completely agree. After only being here for a day at my first IC, the energy is amazing and I feel so connected to everyone here. When did you first become involved in the Black Lives Matter movement and why do you believe this movement is so important to today's society and how can we contribute to the growth of this movement and to continue its like legacy and how it's like going to continue going? Absolutely. I uh, uh, started in 2012 as one of the original marchers after the march after the death of Trayvon Martin with 40 young adults 40 young people college students and high school students uh, marching from Daytona Beach to Sanford Florida after the murder of Trayvon Martin uh, with the group that be became known as the Dream Defenders and so from 2012 to now almost 11 years later we have continued to be on the front line advocating for black lives advocating for uh, for for people to have equality in this country we recognize that uh, black liberation in this country has always been a threat to this democracy. Uh, but yet, in order to become a true multiracial democracy, in order to truly become the nation that we intend to be and that has been um, ascribed even in our genesis, it is to truly become uh, one where everyone is respected. And so this movement uh, welcomes everyone. This woman affirms all human personality. Uh, and this movement needs young leaders like uh, those here at the BBYO IC to take uh, up uh, the mantle and to use their voices and in their communities to speak up about racial inequities, about to speak up about poverty, to speak up about about the issues of police brutality, because all of us are interconnected. We're, we're tied together in a single garment of destiny, Dr. King says, and what affects one indirectly affects another directly. And I believe that the reality of our interconnectedness um, is what unites us and why we believe that from anti-Semitism to anti-police brutality work, we're all tied together and to be able to push this nation forward. Thank you so much for sharing this important call to action. Thank you for every, all the work that you've been doing for our community. Social media is so important to today's society and all everyone's views are spread through this platform, whether they're positive or negative towards people all over the world. Do you believe that social media is helping or hurting the effects of the Black Lives Matter movement? Sure, social media uh, has uh, helped in, in numerous ways to amplify um, uh, the, the cause of this movement and the sort of issues. We, we know that it's because of social media that we were able to see the video of George Floyd being murdered for eight minutes, and 46 seconds, and what that meant to uh, people watching it on their timelines and how that inspired people to act. Um, social media has done a good job in helping to communicate in that regard, but also has done a, a, a provided some negative energy to the movement by uh, creating discord and dissension. Uh, we know that, that social media has been infiltrated in the 2020 uh, 2016 election um, by foreign uh, sources to use social media to to divide the movement, to deter people from voting. So we know that social media 
uh, provides an avenue for evil and wickedness to take place. But we must be consistent in our approach uh, and, and be providing ways to use social media as a tool for good. And how do you believe our generation and their outward voice against all this stuff is affecting our society? And do you believe this, po this is a positive or negative effect? Well, I think that social media is creating a, a comparison in, in this generation, a, a feature in which um, one always looks to uh, their other peers as as uh, with filters to see and to measure themselves to it. I think that that is creating a lot of uh, a lot of tension, a lot of mental health issues, a lot of a lot of uh, crises as it relates to depression and anxiety. And I think that we must uh, look at social media not uh, through the lens of uh, of comparative uh, ethics, but find a way to find some form of complementation, complementary, or a compliment, if you will, uh, that would uh, provide ways to build community. Like social media is supposed to be about building community. Social is the, is the critical form of, of its of it, of its name, and, and its society and social is is, is grounded in community. And we have to find a way to use it for community and not for comparison. I think that's the difficulty that we're having in our generation and, and generations beyond me uh, to figure out how do we get back and not allow ads or filters or comparison to dictate for us what we know to be true. I completely agree. For one of my college classes, I wrote a paper on the effects of social media on like mental health and body disformity issues. And it's so important because so many people, there's so many platforms out there to show like how it's how it's hurting it because of all the comparisons with um, this model and that model. But it shows how also so many companies are changing their platforms to promote all of this good stuff that's happening around the world. Good. And there's so many different faiths in this world and there's conflicting point of views because of all the different belief systems. Do you believe we can connect these ideas to make the world more peaceful? And how can we use this connection to improve our society and have a better way of living? Sure, it's an incredible question. I think that of all the faith traditions that are in this world that we have, I think what grounds each and every one of them is this core concept and philosophy of love. We all may talk about it in a different way. We all may have a different word for it. What's grounded is this sort of human experience of uh, that is also yet sacred, that also takes us beyond ourselves and helps us to recognize the worth and personality of others. And I think that when we ground ourselves in love and find that love is the universal truth and is the universal principle that is found in all the major religions in this world and even the non-major traditions, we find ourselves more interconnected than divided. We find ourselves more united than we can ever be uh, apart. And I believe that that is what is going to be helpful for us to reimagine the world. We've got to recognize that our faith traditions uh, push us to be able to uh, do the work in the world, in the society, in in the lived experience that we're, we're walking in. And I think that when we utilize love as the foundation, as the common denominator, we'll be able to engage beyond barriers and we'll be able to tear down walls of division. That's so true. As members of BBYO, we have learned so much about social activism and standing against standing up against anti-Semitic anti comments, anti-Semitism in general, and just discrimination. What advice do you have for teens to help express their disconsent for all these hatred and bigotry without being felt like they have so much pressure and so much hatred mm -hmm. for on them for doing this? Sure. And I and I go I'll go back to my previous answer around using love as a form of liberation, using love as a form of organizing. Because when we organize and when we address these issues through love, we recognize that we're not talking about people. We're talking about their policies or their principles. And we can change uh, those systems that are in place to say, well, why does society make it okay for one to possess this level of hatred? And then we begin to address the root causes of that. And then once we address the root causes, we can see that people can be transformed because society can be shifted because we can use our collective power and our collective energy to be able to transform the world so that everyone is appreciated, no matter our 
diverse backgrounds, our race, our color, our creed, our sexuality, that we are all able uh, to be deemed as as worthy, to be deemed as full of life, to be deemed as those who are full of love. And I believe that when we um, can use our voices and are willing to speak up and, and definitely think of the, the, the issue and not just the person and not, you know, even though someone may say anti-Semitic rhetoric, you know, we got to figure out how we can change the society that makes anti-Semitism okay. Mm -hmm. And then hoping and then pushing when we transform society, we can transform the individuals in that society. Thank you so much. We've learned so much from you and all the outward activism that you have been doing to better society. Thank you so much for speaking with me today and please continue what you're doing to help society and to make this world a better and more peaceful place. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. your incredible questions and I wish you much success in your college endeavors and what is beyond as you continue this work in BBY. Thank you so much. All right.